The Viking Age AD is a period in European history, especially Northern European and Scandinavian history, following the Germanic Iron Age. It is the period of history when Scandinavian Norsemen explored Europe by its seas and rivers for trade, raids, colonization, and conquest. In this period, the Norsemen settled in Norse Greenland, Newfoundland, and present-day Faroe Islands, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Normandy, Scotland, England, Wales, Ireland, Isle of Man, the Netherlands, Germany, Ukraine, Russia, and Turkey. Viking travelers and colonists were seen at many points in history as brutal raiders. Many historical documents suggest that their invasion of other countries was retaliation in response to the encroachment upon tribal lands by Christian missionaries, and perhaps by the Saxon wars prosecuted by Charlemagne and his kin to the south, or were motivated by overpopulation, trade inequities, and the lack of viable farmland in their homeland. Information about the Viking Age is drawn largely from what was written about the Vikings by their enemies, and primary sources of archaeology, supplemented with secondary sources such as the Icelandic sagas. Historical considerations In England, the beginning of the Viking Age is dated to 8 June 793, when Vikings destroyed the abbey on Lindisfarne, a centre of learning on an island off the northeast coast of England in Northumberland. Monks were killed in the abbey, thrown into the sea to drown, or carried away as slaves along with the church treasures, giving rise to the traditional but unattested prayer. A furore normanorum libera nos, domini. Free us from the fury of the Northmen, Lord. Three Viking ships had beached in Weymouth Bay four years earlier although due to a scribal error the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle dates this event to 787 rather than 789, but that incursion may have been a trading expedition that went wrong rather than a piratical raid. Lindisfarne was different. The Viking devastation of Northumbria's holy island was reported by the Northumbrian scholar Alcuin of York, who wrote, Never before in Britain has such a terror appeared. Vikings were portrayed as wholly violent and bloodthirsty by their enemies. In medieval English chronicles, they are described as wolves among sheep. The first challenges to the many anti-Viking images in Britain emerged in the 17th century. Pioneering scholarly works on the Viking Age reached a small readership in Britain. Linguistics traced the Viking Age origins of rural idioms and proverbs. New dictionaries of the Old Norse language enabled more Victorians to read the Icelandic sagas. In Scandinavia, the 17th century Danish scholars Thomas Bartholin and Ole Worm and Swedish scholar Oleus Rudbeck were the first to use runic inscriptions and Icelandic sagas as primary historical sources. During the Enlightenment and Nordic Renaissance, historians such as the Icelandic Norwegian Thormodus Taufeus, Danish Norwegian Ludvig Holberg, and Swedish Olaf von Dalen developed a more rational and pragmatic approach to historical scholarship. By the latter half of the 18th century, while the Icelandic sagas were still used as important historical sources, the Viking Age had again come to be regarded as a barbaric and uncivilized period in the history of the Nordic countries. Scholars outside Scandinavia did not begin to extensively reassess the achievements of the Vikings until the 1890s, recognizing their artistry, technological skills, and seamanship. Until recently, the history of the Viking Age had largely been based on Icelandic sagas, the history of the Danes written by Saxo Grammaticus, the Kievan Rus's primary chronicle, and the War of the Irish with the Foreigners. Today, most scholars take these texts as sources not to be understood literally and are relying more on concrete archaeological findings, numismatics, and other direct scientific disciplines and methods. Historical background The Vikings who invaded Western and Eastern Europe were mainly pagans from the same area as present-day Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. They also settled in the Faroe Islands, Ireland, Iceland, peripheral Scotland Caithness, the Hebrides and the Northern Isles, Greenland, and Canada. Their North Germanic language, Old Norse, became the mother tongue of present-day Scandinavian languages. By 801, a strong central authority appears to have been established in Jutland, and the Danes were beginning to look beyond their own territory for land, trade, and plunder. In Norway, mountainous terrain and fjords formed strong natural boundaries. Communities remained independent of each other, unlike the situation in lowland Denmark. By 800, some 30 small kingdoms existed in Norway. 
The sea was the easiest way of communication between the Norwegian kingdoms and the outside world. In the 8th century, Scandinavians began to build ships of war and send them on raiding expeditions which started the Viking Age. The North Sea rovers were traders, colonizers, explorers, and plunderers. Probable causes of Norse expansion Many theories are posited for the cause of the Viking invasions, the will to explore likely played a major role. At the time, England, Wales, and Ireland were vulnerable to attack, being divided into many different warring kingdoms in a state of internal disarray, while the Franks were well defended. Overpopulation, especially near the Scandes, was possibly influential this theory regarding overpopulation is disputed. Technological advance like the use of iron, or a shortage of women due to selective female infanticide also had an impact. Tensions caused by Frankish expansion to the south of Scandinavia, and their subsequent attacks upon the Viking peoples, may have also played a role in Viking pillaging. Harold I of Norway, Harold Fairhair, had united Norway around this time and displaced many peoples. As a result, these people sought for new bases to launch counter raids against Harold. Vikings would plant crops after the winter and go raiding as soon as the ice melted on the sea, then return home with their loot in time to harvest the crops. Debate among scholars is ongoing as to why the Scandinavians began to expand from the 8th through 11th centuries. Demographic model This model suggests that Scandinavia experienced a population boom just before the Viking Age began. The agricultural capacity of the land was not enough to keep up with the increasing population. As a result, many Scandinavians found themselves with no property and no status. To remedy this, these landless men took to piracy to obtain material wealth. The population continued to grow, and the pirates looked further and further beyond the borders of the Baltic, and eventually into all of Europe. Economic model The economic model states that the Viking Age was the result of growing urbanism and trade throughout mainland Europe. As the Islamic world grew, so did its trade routes, and the wealth which moved along them was pushed further and further north. In Western Europe, proto-urban centres such as the witch town of Anglo-Saxon England began to boom during the prosperous era known as the Long Eighth Century. The Scandinavians, like many other Europeans, were drawn to these wealthier, urban, centres, which soon became frequent targets of Viking raids. The connection of the Scandinavians to larger and richer trade networks lured the Vikings into Western Europe, and soon the rest of Europe and parts of the Middle East. In England, hordes of Viking silver, such as the Quirdale Horde and the Vale of York Horde, offer good insight to this phenomenon. Ideological model This era coincided with the medieval warm period 800 and stopped with the start of the Little Ice Age about 1250-1850. The start of the Viking Age, with the sack of Lindisfarne, also coincided with Charlemagne's Saxon Wars, or Christian Wars with pagans in Saxony. Historians Rudolf Simic and Bruno Dumezel theorize that the Viking attacks may have been in response to the spread of Christianity among pagan peoples. Professor Rudolf Simic believes, "...it is not a coincidence if the early Viking activity occurred during the reign of Charlemagne." Because of the penetration of Christianity in Scandinavia, serious conflict divided Norway for almost a century. Political model The first of two main components to the political model is the external pole factor, which suggests that the weak political bodies of Britain and Western Europe made for an attractive target for Viking raiders. The reasons for these weaknesses vary, but generally can be simplified into decentralized polities, or religious sites. As a result, Viking raiders found it easy to sack and then retreat from these areas which were thus frequently raided. The second case is the internal push factor, which coincides with a period just before the Viking Age in which Scandinavia was undergoing a mass centralization of power in the modern-day countries of Denmark, Sweden, and especially Norway. This centralization of power forced hundreds of chieftains from their lands, which were slowly being eaten up by the kings and dynasties that began to emerge. As a result, many of these chiefs sought refuge elsewhere, and began harrying the coasts of the British Isles and Western Europe. Technological model This model suggests that the Viking Age occurred as a result of technological innovations that allowed the Vikings to go on their raids in the first place. There is no doubt that piracy existed in the Baltic before the Viking Age, but developments in sailing technology and practice made it possible for early Viking raiders to attack lands farther away. 
Among these developments are included the use of larger sails, tacking practices, and 24 hour sailing. These models constitute much of what is known about the motivations for and the causes of the Viking Age. In all likelihood, the beginning of this age was the result of some combination of the aforementioned models. Historic overview The earliest date given for a Viking raid is 789, when according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, a group of men from Norway sailed to the Isle of Portland in Dorset it was wrongly recorded as 787. They were mistaken for merchants by a royal official. When asked to come to the king's manor to pay a trading tax on their goods, they murdered the official. The beginning of the Viking Age in the British Isles is often set at 793. It was recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle that the Northmen raided the important island monastery of Lindisfarne the generally accepted date is actually 8 June, not January AD 793. This year came dreadful four warnings over the land of the Northumbrians, terrifying the people most woefully, these were immense sheets of light rushing through the air, and whirlwinds, and fiery dragons flying across the firmament. These tremendous tokens were soon followed by a great famine, and not long after, on the sixth day before the Ides of January in the same year, the harrowing inroads of heathen men made lamentable havoc in the Church of God in Holy Island Lindisfarne, by rapine and slaughter. In 794, according to the Annals of Ulster, a serious attack was made on Lindisfarne's mother house of Iona, which was followed in 795 by raids upon the northern coast of Ireland. From bases there, the Norsemen attacked Iona again in 802, causing great slaughter amongst the Salie des Brethren, and burning the abbey to the ground. The Kingdom of the Franks under Charlemagne was particularly devastated by these raiders, who could sail up the Seine with near impunity. Near the end of Charlemagne's reign and throughout the reigns of his sons and grandsons, a string of Norse raids began, culminating in a gradual Scandinavian conquest and settlement of the region now known as Normandy. The clinker-built longships used by the Scandinavians were uniquely suited to both deep and shallow waters. They extended the reach of Norse raiders, traders, and settlers along coastlines and along the major river valleys of northwestern Europe. Rurik also expanded to the east, and in 859 became ruler either by conquest or invitation by local people of the city of Novgorod which means, New City, on the Volkhov River. His successors moved further, founding the early East Slavic state of Kievan Rus with the capital in Kiev. This persisted until 1240, when the Mongols invaded Russia. Other Norse people, particularly those from the area that is now modern-day Sweden and Norway, continued south to the Black Sea and then on to Constantinople. Whenever these Viking ships ran aground in shallow waters, the Vikings reportedly turned them on their sides and dragged them across the shallows into deeper waters. The eastern connections of these Varangians brought Byzantine silk, coins from Samarkand, even a cowrie shell from the Red Sea, to Viking York. In 884, an army of Danish Vikings was defeated at the Battle of Norditi also called the Battle of Hilgenried Bay on the Germanic North Sea coast by a Frisian army under Archbishop Rimbert of Bremen Hamburg, which precipitated the complete and permanent withdrawal of the Vikings from East Frisia. In 911, French King Charles the Simple was able to make an agreement with the Viking warleader Rollo, a chieftain of disputed Norwegian or Danish origins. Charles gave Rollo the title of Duke and granted his followers and him possession of Normandy. In return, Rollo swore fealty to Charles, converted to Christianity, and undertook to defend the northern region of France against the incursions of other Viking groups. Several generations later, the Norman descendants of these Viking settlers not only identified themselves as Norman, but also carried the Norman language, a Romance language with Germanic influence, and their Norman culture, into England in 1066. With the Norman conquest, they became the ruling aristocracy of Anglo-Saxon England. In Scandinavia, the Viking Age is considered to have ended with the establishment of royal authority in the Scandinavian countries and the establishment of Christianity as the dominant religion. The date is usually put somewhere in the early 11th century in all three Scandinavian countries. The end of the Viking era in Norway is marked by the Battle of Sticklisted in 1030. Although Olafur Haraldsson's later known as Olav the Holy Army lost the battle, Christianity spread, partly on the strength of rumours of miraculous signs after his death. Norwegians would no longer be called Vikings. In Sweden, the reign of King Olov Skotkoning c. 
is considered to be the transition from the Viking Age to the Middle Ages, because he was the first Christian king of the Swedes, and he is associated with a growing influence of the church in what is today southwestern and central Sweden. The end of the Viking Age is traditionally marked in England by the failed invasion attempted by the Norwegian king Harald III who was defeated by Saxon king Harald Godwinson in 1066 at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, in Ireland, the capture of Dublin by Strongbow and his Hiberno-Norman forces in 1171, and 1263 in Scotland by the defeat of King Hakon Hakonarsson at the Battle of Largs by troops loyal to Alexander III. Godwinson was subsequently defeated within a month by another Viking descendant, William, Duke of Normandy. Scotland took its present form when it regained territory from the Norse between the 13th and the 15th centuries. The Western Isles and the Isle of Man remained under Scandinavian authority until 1266. Orkney and Shetland belonged to the King of Norway as late as 1469. Topic: <laughs> Northwestern Europe. Topic. England According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, Viking raiders struck England in 793 and raided Lindisfarne, the monastery that held St. Cuthbert's relics. The raiders killed the monks and captured the valuables. The raid marks the beginning of the Viking Age of Invasion, made possible by the Viking longship. Great but sporadic violence occurred from the last decade of the 8th century on England's northern and eastern shores. Viking raids continued on a small scale across coastal England. While the initial raiding groups were small, a great amount of planning is believed to have been involved. The Norwegians raided during the winter of 842 841, rather than the usual summer, having waited on an island off Ireland. In 850, Vikings overwintered for the first time in England, on the island of Thanet, Kent. In 854, a raiding party overwintered a second time, at the Isle of Sheppey in the Thames estuary. In 864, they reverted to Thanet for their winter encampment. The following year, the great heathen army, led by brothers Ivar the Boneless Halfden and Ubba, and also by another Viking Guthrum, arrived in East Anglia. They proceeded to cross England into Northumbria and captured York, establishing the Viking community of Jorvik, where some settled as farmers and craftsmen. Most of the English kingdoms, being in turmoil, could not stand against the Vikings. In 867, Northumbria became the northern kingdom of the coalescing Danelaw, after its conquest by the brothers Halfdan Ragnarsson and Ivar the Boneless, who installed an Englishman, Egbert, as a puppet king. By 870, the Great Summer Army arrived in England, led by a Viking leader called Bagseg and his five earls. Aided by the great heathen army which had already overrun much of England from its base in Jorvik, Bagseg's forces, and Halfdan's forces through an alliance, the combined Viking forces raided much of England until 871, when they planned an invasion of Wessex. On 8 January 871, Bagseg was killed at the Battle of Ashdown along with his earls. As a result, many of the Vikings returned to northern England, where Jorvik had become the centre of the Viking kingdom, but Alfred of Wessex managed to keep them out of his country. Alfred and his successors continued to drive back the Viking frontier and take York. A new wave of Norwegian Vikings appeared in England in 947 when Eric Bloodax captured York. In 1003, the Danish king Swain Forkbeard started a series of raids against England. This culminated in a full-scale invasion that led to Swain being crowned King of England in 1013. Swain was also King of Denmark and parts of Norway at this time. The throne of England passed to Edmund Ironside of Wessex after Swain's death in 1014. Swain's son, Canute the Great, won the throne of England in 1016 through conquest. When Canute the Great died in 1035 he was a King of Denmark, England, Norway, and parts of Sweden. Harold Harefoot became King of England after Canute's death, and Viking rule of England ceased. The Viking presence dwindled until 1066, when the invading Norsemen lost their final battle with the English at Stamford Bridge. Nineteen days later, the Normans, themselves descended from Norsemen, invaded England and defeated the weakened English army at the Battle of Hastings. In 1152, Eystein II of Norway led a plundering raid down the east coast of Britain. Ireland 
The Vikings pillaged monasteries on Ireland's west coast in 795, and then spread out to cover the rest of the coastline. The north and east of the island were most affected. During the first 40 years, the raids were conducted by small, mobile Viking groups. By 830, the groups consisted of large fleets of Viking ships. From 840, the Vikings began establishing permanent bases at the coasts. Dublin was the most significant settlement in the long term. The Irish became accustomed to the Viking presence. In some cases, they became allies and married each other. In 832, a Viking fleet of about 120 invaded kingdoms on Ireland's northern and eastern coasts. Some believe that the increased number of invaders coincided with Scandinavian leaders' desires to control the profitable raids on the western shores of Ireland. During the mid-830s, raids began to push deeper into Ireland, as opposed to just touching the coasts. Navigable waterways made this deeper penetration possible. After 840, the Vikings had several bases in strategic locations dispersed throughout Ireland. In 838, a small Viking fleet entered the River Liffey in eastern Ireland. The Vikings set up a base, which the Irish called a longfort. This longfort eventually became Dublin. After this interaction, the Irish experienced Viking forces for about 40 years. The Vikings also established longforts in Cork, Limerick, Waterford, and Wexford. The Vikings could sail through on the main river and branch off into different areas of the country. Norwegian Vikings and other Scandinavians conducted extensive raids in Ireland. They founded Limerick in 812, then established Waterford in 853, founded the only Viking capital city in the world outside the Nordic countries in Dublin, and founded trading ports in Cork in the 9th century. Predominantly Norwegians, and to a smaller extent other Scandinavians, settled down and intermixed with the Irish. Literature, crafts, and decorative styles in Ireland and Britain reflected West Norse culture. Vikings traded at Irish markets in Dublin and solidified Dublin as an important city. Excavations found imported fabrics from England, Byzantium, Persia, and Central Asia. Dublin became so crowded by the 11th century that houses were constructed outside the town walls. One of the last major battles involving Vikings was the Battle of Clontarf on 23 April 1014, in which Vikings fought both for the Irish over King Brian Boru's army and for the Viking-led army opposing him. Irish and Viking literature depict the Battle of Clontarf as a gathering of this world and the supernatural, including witches, goblins, and demons. A Viking poem portrays the environment as strongly pagan, with chanting Valkyries deciding who would live and who would die. Topic. Scotland While few records are known, the Vikings are thought to have led their first raids in Scotland on the Holy Island of Iona in 794, the year following the raid on the other Holy Island of Lindisfarne, Northumbria. In 839, a large Norse fleet invaded via the River Tay and River Erne, both of which were highly navigable, and reached into the heart of the Pictish kingdom of Fortriu. They defeated Eogan Mac Angusa, King of the Picts, his brother Bran, and the King of the Scots of Dal Riata, Aid Mac Baanta, along with many members of the Pictish aristocracy in battle. The sophisticated kingdom that had been built fell apart, as did the Pictish leadership, which had been stable for more than 100 years since the time of Angus Mac Fergusa the accession of Synod Mac Ailpin as King of both Picts and Scots can be attributed to the aftermath of this event. Topic. Earldom of Orkney By the mid-9th century, the Norsemen had settled in Shetland, Orkney the Nordries Noriher, the Hebrides and Isle of Man, the Sudries Shereher — this survives in the Diocese of Sodor and Man and parts of mainland Scotland. The Norse settlers were to some extent integrating with the local Gaelic population see Norse Gaels in the Hebrides and Man. These areas were ruled over by local Jarls, originally captains of ships or hersers. The Jarl of Orkney and Shetland, however, claimed supremacy. In 875, King Harold Fairhair led a fleet from Norway to Scotland. In his attempt to unite Norway, he found that many of those opposed to his rise to power had taken refuge in the Isles. From here, they were raiding not only foreign lands but were also attacking Norway itself. He organised a fleet and was able to subdue the rebels, and in doing so brought the independent Jarls under his control, many of the rebels having fled to Iceland. He found himself ruling not only Norway, but also the Isles, Man, and parts of Scotland. 
Topic: <laughs> Kings of the Isles. In 876, the Norse Gaels of Man and the Hebrides rebelled against Harald. A fleet was sent against them led by Ketil Flatnos to regain control. On his success, Ketil was to rule the Sudris as a vassal of King Harald. His grandson Thorstein the Red and Sigurd the Mighty, Jarl of Orkney invaded Scotland were able to exact tribute from nearly half the kingdom until their deaths in battle. Ketil declared himself King of the Isles. Ketil was eventually outlawed and fearing the bounty on his head fled to Iceland. The Norse Gaelic kings of the Isles continued to act semi-independently, in 973 forming a defensive pact with the kings of Scotland and Strathclyde. In 1095, the king of Man and the Isles Godred Crovan was killed by Magnus Berlegs, king of Norway. Magnus and King Edgar of Scotland agreed on a treaty. The islands would be controlled by Norway, but mainland territories would go to Scotland. The king of Norway nominally continued to be king of the Isles and Man. However, in 1156, the kingdom was split into two. The Western Isles and Man continued as to be called the Kingdom of Man and the Isles. But the Inner Hebrides came under the influence of Summerled, a Gaelic speaker, who was styled King of the Hebrides. His kingdom was to develop latterly into the lordship of the Isles. In eastern Aberdeenshire, the Danes invaded at least as far north as the area near Cruden Bay. The Jarls of Orkney continued to rule much of northern Scotland until 1196, when Harold Madison agreed to pay tribute to William the Lion, King of Scots, for his territories on the mainland. The end of the Viking Age proper in Scotland is generally considered to be in 1266. In 1263, King Haakon IV of Norway, in retaliation for a Scots expedition to Skye, arrived on the west coast with a fleet from Norway and Orkney. His fleet linked up with those of King Magnus of Man and King Dougal of the Hebrides. After peace talks failed, his forces met with the Scots at Largs, in Ayrshire. The battle proved indecisive, but it did ensure that the Norse were not able to mount a further attack that year. Hawken died overwintering in Orkney, and by 1266, his son Magnus the Lawmender ceded the Kingdom of Man and the Isles, with all territories on mainland Scotland to Alexander III, through the Treaty of Perth. Orkney and Shetland continued to be ruled as autonomous geraldoms under Norway until 1468, when King Christian I pledged them as security on the dowry of his daughter, who was betrothed to James III of Scotland. Although attempts were made during the 17th and 18th centuries to redeem Shetland, without success, and Charles II ratifying the pawning in the 1669 Act for annexation of Orkney and Shetland to the Crown, explicitly exempting them from any dissolution of His Majesty's lands, they are currently considered as being officially part of the United Kingdom. <laughs> Wales Incursions in Wales were decisively reversed at the Battle of Buddington in Powys, 893, when a combined Welsh and Mercian army under Ethelred, Lord of the Mercians, defeated a Danish band. Wales was not colonised by the Vikings as heavily as eastern England. The Vikings did, however, settle in the south around St David's, Haverfordwest, and Gower, among other places. Place names such as Skokholm, Skomer, and Swansea remain as evidence of the Norse settlement. The Vikings, however, did not subdue the Welsh mountain kingdoms. Topic: Iceland. According to sagas, Iceland was discovered by Nadad, a Viking from the Faroe Islands, after which it was settled by mostly Norwegians fleeing the oppressive rule of Harald Fairhair, late 9th century. While harsh, the land allowed for a pastoral farming life familiar to the Norse. According to the saga of Eric the Red, when Eric was exiled from Iceland, he sailed west and pioneered Greenland. Topic: <inaudible> Greenland. The Viking Age settlements in Greenland were established in the sheltered fjords of the southern and western coast. They settled in three separate areas along roughly 650 kilometers (350 nmi, 400 miles) of the western coast. While harsh, the microclimates along some fjords allowed for a pastoral lifestyle similar to that of Iceland, until the climate changed for the worse with the Little Ice Age around 1400. The eastern settlement, the remains of about 450 farms have been found here. Eric the Red settled at Bratelid on Eriksford. The middle settlement, near modern Ivigtut, consisted of about 20 farms. 
The western settlement at modern Gotthopsford, was established before the 12th century. It has been extensively excavated by archaeologists. Kvenland Kvenland, known as Quenland, Caneland, and similar terms in medieval sources, is an ancient name for an area in Scandinavia and Fennoscandia. A contemporary reference to Kvenland is provided in an Old English account written in the 9th century. It used the information provided by the Norwegian adventurer and traveller named Othair. Kvenland, in that or close to that spelling, is also known from Nordic sources, primarily Icelandic, but also one that was possibly written in the modern-day area of Norway. All the remaining Nordic sources discussing Kvenland, using that or close to that spelling, date to the 12th and 13th centuries, but some of them—in part at least—are believed to be rewrites of older texts. Other references and possible references to Kvenland by other names and or spellings are discussed in the main article of Kvenland. Eastern Europe The Varangians or Varyags Russian, Ukrainian, Varagi Varyagi, Belarusian, Varagi Varahi, Greek, Beringoi Beringoi Varangoi sometimes referred to as Varyagians were Scandinavians, often Swedes, who migrated eastwards and southwards through what is now Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine mainly in the 9th and 10th centuries. Engaging in trade, piracy, and mercenary activities, they roamed the river systems and portage of Gardariki, reaching the Caspian Sea and Constantinople. Contemporary English publications also use the name Viking. For early Varangians in some contexts, the term Varangian remained in usage in the Byzantine Empire until the 13th century, largely disconnected from its Scandinavian roots by then. Having settled Aldeja Ladoga in the 750s, Scandinavian colonists were probably an element in the early ethnogenesis of the Rus people, and likely played a role in the formation of the Rus Kaganate. The Varangians Varyags, in Old East Slavic, are first mentioned by the primary chronicle as having exacted tribute from the Slavic and Finnic tribes in 859. It was the time of rapid expansion of the Vikings in northern Europe. England began to pay Danegeld in 859, and the Coronians of Groben faced an invasion by the Swedes at about the same date. In 862, the Finnic and Slavic tribes rebelled against the Varangian Rus, driving them overseas back to Scandinavia, but soon started to conflict with each other. The disorder prompted the tribes to invite back the Varangian Rus to come and rule them and bring peace to the region. This was a somewhat bilateral relation with the Varajans defending the cities that they ruled. Led by Rurik and his brothers Truver and Sinius, the invited Varangians called Rus settled around the town of Novgorod In the 9th century, the Rus operated the Volga trade route, which connected northern Russia with the Middle East As the Volga route declined by the end of the century, the trade route from the Varangians to the Greeks rapidly overtook it in popularity. Apart from Ladoga and Novgorod, Nezdovo and Gotland were major centres for Varangian trade. Western historians tend to agree with the primary chronicle that these Scandinavians founded Kievan Rus in the 880s and gave their name to the land. Many Slavic scholars are opposed to this theory of Germanic influence on the Rus and have suggested alternative scenarios for this part of Eastern European history. In contrast to the intense Scandinavian influence in Normandy and the British Isles, Varangian culture did not survive to a great extent in the east. Instead, the Varangian ruling classes of the two powerful city-states of Novgorod and Kiev were thoroughly slavicized by the end of the 10th century. Old Norse was spoken in one district of Novgorod, however, until the 13th century. <laughs> Central Europe Viking Age Scandinavian settlements were set up along the southern coast of the Baltic Sea, primarily for trade purposes. Their appearance coincides with the settlement and consolidation of the Slavic tribes in the respective areas. Scandinavians had contacts to the Slavs since their very immigration, these first contacts were soon followed by both the construction of Scandinavian emporia and Slavic boroughs in their vicinity. The Scandinavian settlements were larger than the early Slavic ones, their craftsmen had a considerably higher productivity, and in contrast to the early Slavs, the Scandinavians were capable of seafaring. 
Their importance for trade with the Slavic world however was limited to the coastal regions and their hinterlands. Scandinavian settlements at the Mecklenburgian coast include Rierik on the eastern coast of Wismar Bay, and Dierkau near Rostock. Rierik was set up around the year 700, but following later warfare between Obodrites and Danes, the merchants were resettled to Haithabu. Dierkau prospered from the late 8th to the early 9th century. Scandinavian settlements at the Pomeranian coast include Wolin on the Isle of Wolin, Ralswijk on the Isle of Rugen, Altes Lager Menslin at the Lower Peen River, and Bardi Suilubi near modern Kolobrzeg. Menslin was set up in the mid 8th century. Wolin and Ralswijk began to prosper in the course of the 9th century. A merchant's settlement has also been suggested near Arcona, but no archaeological evidence supports this theory. Menslin and Bardi Suilubi were vacated in the late 9th century. Ralswijk made it into the new millennium, but at the time when written chronicles reported the site in the 12th century, it had lost all its importance. Wolin, thought to be identical with legendary Veneta and semi legendary Jomsborg, base of the Joms Vikings, was destroyed by the Danes in the 12th century. Scandinavian arrowheads from the 8th and 9th centuries were found between the coast and the lake chains in the Mecklenburgian and Pomeranian hinterlands, pointing at periods of warfare between the Scandinavians and Slavs. Scandinavian settlements existed along the southeastern Baltic coast in Trousseau and Kop, Old Prussia, and in Groben, Courland, Latvia. Topic: <laughs> Western and Southern Europe. Topic: Frisia and Germany Topic France The French region of Normandy takes its name from the Viking invaders who were called Normanni which means men of the north Today Nordman Pran Norman in the Norwegian language denotes a Norwegian person The first Viking raids began between 790 and 800 along the coasts of western France they were carried out primarily in the summer, as the Vikings wintered in Scandinavia. Several coastal areas were lost to Francia during the reign of Louis the Pious 814 But the Vikings took advantage of the quarrels in the royal family caused after the death of Louis the Pious to settle their first colony in the southwest Gascony of the Kingdom of Francia, which was more or less abandoned by the Frankish kings after their two defeats at Ronchevo. The incursions in 841 caused severe damage to Rouen and Jumiges. The Viking attackers sought to capture the treasures stored at monasteries, easy prey given the monks' lack of defensive capacity. In 845 an expedition up the Seine reached Paris. The presence of Carolingian deniers of ca. 847, found in 1871 among a hoard at Mulligboden, County Limerick, where coins were neither minted nor normally used in trade, probably represents booty from the raids of 843-6. After 851, Vikings began to stay in the lower Seine Valley for the winter. Twice more in the 860s Vikings rode to Paris, leaving only when they acquired sufficient loot or bribes from the Carolingian rulers. The Carolingian kings tended to have contradictory politics, which had severe consequences. In 867, Charles the Bald signed the Treaty of Compiègne, by which he agreed to yield the Cotentin Peninsula to the Breton king Solomon, on the condition that Solomon would take an oath of fidelity and fight as an ally against the Vikings. Nevertheless, in 911 the Viking leader Rollo forced Charles the Simple to sign the Treaty of St. Clair sur Epte, under which Charles gave Rouen and the area of present-day Upper Normandy to Rollo, establishing the Duchy of Normandy. In exchange, Rollo pledged vassalage to Charles in 940, agreed to be baptized, and vowed to guard the estuaries of the Seine from further Viking attacks, even though the exact opposite was often the case. The Duchy of Normandy also annexed further areas in northern France, expanding the territory which was originally negotiated. While many buildings were pillaged, burned, or destroyed by the Viking raids, ecclesiastical sources may have been overly negative as no city was completely destroyed. On the other hand, many monasteries were pillaged and all the abbeys were destroyed. Rollo and his successors brought about rapid recoveries from the raids. The Scandinavian colonization was principally Norwegian and Danish under the leadership of Rollo. A few Swedes were present. The merging of the Scandinavian and native elements contributed to the creation of one of the most powerful feudal states of Western Europe. The naval ability of the Normans would allow them to conquer England and southern Italy, and play a key role in the Crusades. 
Italy. In 860, according to an account by the Norman monk Dudo of St. Quentin, a Viking fleet, probably under Bjorn Ironside and Hastine, landed at the Ligurian port of Luni and sacked the city. The Vikings then moved another 60 miles down the Tuscan coast to the mouth of the Arno, sacking Pisa and then, following the river upstream, also the hill town of Fiesole above Florence, and others' victory around the Mediterranean including in Sicily and North Africa. Many Anglo-Danish and Varangian mercenaries fought in southern Italy, including Harold Hardrada and William de Hauteville who conquered parts of Sicily between 1038 and 1040, and Edgar the Etheling who participated in the Norman conquest of southern Italy. Runestones were raised in Sweden in memory of warriors who died in Langbarland, land of the Lombards, the Old Norse name for southern Italy. Topic: <inaudible> Spain. After 842, when the Vikings set up a permanent base at the mouth of the Loire River, they could strike as far as northern Spain. They attacked Cadiz in 844. In some of their raids they were crushed either by Kingdom of Asturias or Emirate armies. These Vikings were Hispanicized in all Christian kingdoms, while they kept their ethnic identity and culture in Al-Andalus. In 1015, a Viking fleet entered the river Minho and sacked the episcopal city of Tui Galicia. No new bishop was appointed until 1070. <laughs> Portugal In 844, many dozens of drakers appeared in the Mar da Pala, the Sea of Straw, mouth of the Tagus River. After a siege, the Vikings conquered Lisbon at the time, the city was under Muslim rule and known as Lashbuna. They left after 13 days, following a resistance led by Allah ibn Hazm and the city's inhabitants. Another raid was attempted in 966, without success. North America In about 986, the Norwegian Vikings Bjarni Herjolfsson, Leif Eriksson and Orfin Karlsefni from Greenland reached North America, over 500 years before Christopher Columbus, and they attempted to settle the land they called Vinland. They created a small settlement on the northern peninsula of present-day Newfoundland, near Lonso Meadows. Conflict with indigenous peoples and lack of support from Greenland brought the Vinland colony to an end within a few years. The archaeological remains are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. <inaudible> <inaudible> Old Norse influence on the English language The long-term linguistic effect of the Viking settlements in England was threefold. Over a thousand Old Norse words eventually became part of Standard English. Numerous places in the east and northeast of England have Danish names, and many English personal names are of Scandinavian origin. Scandinavian words that entered the English language included landing, score, beck, fellow, take, busting, and steersman. The vast majority of loan words did not appear in documents until the early 12th century. These included many modern words which used sk sounds, such as skirt, sky, and skin. Other words appearing in written sources at this time included again, awkward, birth, cake, dregs, fog, freckles, gasp, law, moss, neck, ransack, root, scowl, sister, seat, sly, smile, want, weak and window from Old Norse meaning, wind eye. Some of the words that came into use are among the most common in English, such as to go, to come, to sit, to listen, to eat, both, same, get and give. The system of personal pronouns was affected, with they, them and their replacing the earlier forms. Old Norse influenced the verb to be, the replacement of sinden by are is almost certainly Scandinavian in origin, as is the third person singular ending s in the present tense of verbs. There are more than 1,500 Scandinavian place names in England, mainly in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire within the former boundaries of the Danelaw, over 600 end in by, the Scandinavian word for village. For example Grimsby, Naseby and Whitby, many others end in Thorpe, farm, Thwaite, clearing and Toft, homestead. The distribution of family names showing Scandinavian influence is still, as an analysis of names ending in sun reveals, concentrated in the north and east, corresponding to areas of former Viking settlement. Early medieval records indicate that over 60% of personal names in Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire showed Scandinavian influence. <laughs> Topic. Technology. 
The Vikings were equipped with the technologically superior longships, for purposes of conducting trade however, another type of ship, the Nar, wider and deeper in draft, were customarily used. The Vikings were competent sailors, adept in land warfare as well as at sea, and they often struck at accessible and poorly defended targets, usually with near impunity. The effectiveness of these tactics earned Vikings a formidable reputation as raiders and pirates. Chroniclers paid little attention to other aspects of medieval Scandinavian culture. This slant was accentuated by the absence of contemporary primary source documentation from within the Viking Age communities themselves. Little documentary evidence was available until later, when Christian sources began to contribute. As historians and archaeologists have developed more resources to challenge the one-sided descriptions of the chroniclers, a more balanced picture of the Norsemen has become apparent. The Vikings used their longships to travel vast distances and attain certain tactical advantages in battle. They could perform highly efficient hit-and-run attacks, in which they quickly approached a target, then left as rapidly as possible before a counter-offensive could be launched. Because of the ship's negligible draft, the Vikings could sail in shallow waters, allowing them to invade far inland along rivers. Not only were the ships light and agile, but they were light enough to be carried over land from one river system to another. Under sail, the same boats could tackle open water and cross the unexplored wastes of the North Atlantic. The ship's speed was also prodigious for the time, estimated at a maximum of 14 to 15 knots 26 to 28 kilometers per hour. The use of the longships ended when technology changed, and ships began to be constructed using saws instead of axes. This led to a lesser quality of ships. While battles at sea were rare, they would occasionally occur when Viking ships attempted to board European merchant vessels in Scandinavian waters. When larger scale battles ensued, Viking crews would rope together all nearby ships and slowly proceed towards the enemy targets. While advancing, the warriors hurled spears, arrows, and other projectiles at the opponents. When the ships were sufficiently close, melee combat would ensue using axes, swords, and spears until the enemy ship could be easily boarded. The roping technique allowed Viking crews to remain strong in numbers and act as a unit, but this uniformity also created problems. A Viking ship in the line could not retreat or pursue hostiles without breaking the formation and cutting the ropes, which weakened the overall Viking fleet and was a burdensome task to perform in the heat of battle. In general, these tactics enabled Vikings to quickly destroy the meager opposition posted during raids, together with an increasing centralization of government in the Scandinavian countries. The old system of Ladang a fleet mobilization system, where every skipen ship community had to deliver one ship and crew was discontinued. Changes in shipbuilding in the rest of Europe led to the demise of the longship for military purposes. By the 11th and 12th centuries, European fighting ships were built with raised platforms fore and aft, from which archers could shoot down into the relatively low longships. Exactly how the Vikings navigated the open seas with such success is unclear. While some evidence points to the use of calcite sunstones, to find the sun's location, modern reproductions of Viking sky polarimetric navigation have found these sun compasses to be highly inaccurate and not usable in cloudy or foggy weather the archaeological find known as the visby lenses from the swedish island of gotland may be components of a telescope it appears to date from long before the invention of the telescope in the 17th century Recent evidence suggests that the Vikings also made use of an optical compass as a navigation aid, using the light splitting and polarization filtering properties of Iceland spar to find the location of the sun when it was not directly visible. <inaudible> Religion <inaudible> <inaudible> Trade centers Some of the most important trading ports founded by the Norse during the period, include both existing and former cities such as Aarhus Denmark, Rybe Denmark, Hedeby Germany, Veneta Pomerania, Trusso Poland, Bjorgvin Norway, Kaupang Norway, Skuringsel Norway, Birka Sweden, Bordeaux France, York England, Dublin Ireland and Aldejaborg Russia. One important center of trade was at Hedeby. Close to the border with the Franks, it was effectively a crossroads between the cultures, until its eventual destruction by the Norwegians in an internecine dispute around 1050. 
York was the center of the Kingdom of Jorvik from 866, and discoveries there e.g. a silk cap, a counterfeit of a coin from Samarkand and a cowrie shell from the Red Sea or the Persian Gulf suggest that Scandinavian trade connections in the 10th century reached beyond Byzantium. However, those items could also have been Byzantine imports, and there is no reason to assume that the Varangians traveled significantly beyond Byzantium and the Caspian Sea. Topic settlements outside Scandinavia British Isles England Danelaw Jorvik York Cumbrierland Arklo Dyflin Dublin Halimerker Limerick Verifjord Waterford Vikinger Low Wicklow Vasefjord Wexford Isle of Man Man Scotland Caithness Galloway Kintyre Noriher Orkney and Shetland Ross Shereher Hebrides Sutherland Western Europa Normand Eastern Europe Gerariki Russia Seaburg Atlantic Faroe Islands Iceland Greenland North America Norse colonization of the Americas Lance O Meadows and possibly a larger area called Vinland. Topic notes topic Cited sources Forte, Angelo, Orem, Richard, Peterson, Frederick 2005. Viking Empires. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-82992-5. Hall, Richard 2010. Viking Age Archaeology. Shire Publications. ISBN 0-7478-0063-4. Hark, Ole, Lubke, Christian 2001. Zwischen Rierich und Bornhoved, die Bezihungen zwischen den Dannen und ihren Slavischen Nachbarn vom 9. Bis ins 13. International Conference, Leipzig, 4-6 December 1997, Franz Steiner Verlag. ISBN 3-515-07671-9, Jones, Gwyn A History of the Vikings. Oxford University Press. OCLC 581,030,305. Topic further reading Topic Background Brink, S. with Price, N. E. D. S. 2008. The Viking World, Routledge Worlds, Routledge, London and New York, 2008. ISBN 978 0 415 69262 5. Graham Campbell, J. 2001, the Viking World, London, 2001. ISBN 978-0-7112-3468-0 Topic General Surveys Aula, Jonas and Frog with Clive Tolley eds. 2014. Fibula, Fabula, Fact, The Viking Age in Finland. Studia Fenica Historica 18. Helsinki, Finnish Literature Society. Anker, p. 1970. The Art of Scandinavia, Volume 1, London and New York, 1970. Fuglissing, S.H. 1996. Viking Art, in Turner, J. Ed., The Grove Dictionary of Art, Vol. 32, London and New York, 1996, pp. 514-527, 531-532. Graham Campbell, J. Viking Artifacts, A Select Catalogue, British Museum Publications, London, 1980. ISBN 978-0-7141-1354-8 Graham Campbell, James 2013. Viking Art, Thames and Hudson, 2013. ISBN 978-0-500-20419-1 Rosedahl, E. and Wilson, D. M. E. D. S. From Viking to Crusader, Scandinavia and Europe 800-1200, Copenhagen and New York, 1992. Exhibition Catalogue. ISBN 978-0-8478-1625-5 Williams, G., Pence, P. and Wemhoff, M. E. D. S., Vikings, Life and Legend, British Museum Press, London, 2014. Exhibition Catalogue. ISBN 978-0-7141-2336-3 Wilson, D. M. and Clint Jensen, O. 1980. Viking Art, 2nd Edition, George Allen and Onwin, 1980. ISBN 978-0-04-709018-9 Carey, Brian Todd. Technical Marvels, Viking Longships Sailed Seas and Rivers, or Served as Floating Battlefields, Military History 19, No. 6 70-72. Downham, Clare. Viking Kings of Britain and Ireland, The Dynasty of Ivare to AD 1014. Edinburgh, Dunedin Academic Press, 2007 Hudson, Benjamin. Viking Pirates and Christian Princes, Dynasty, Religion, and Empire in North America. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2005 ISBN 0-19-516237-4.
Logan, F. Donald The Vikings in History London, Hutchison & Co., 1983. ISBN 0-415-08396-6. Mayer, Bernhard. The Celts, A History from Earliest Times to the Present. Notre Dame, Indiana, University of Notre Dame Press, 2003. Topic external links Vikings, BBC History Collection of short articles under the headings Overview, Raiders and Settlers, Viking Culture, Evidence Vikings, The North Atlantic Saga, Smithsonian Website for Traveling Exhibition, 2000-2003. The Danish Viking Age Old Norse Literature from Kulturformidling and Noroni Texter og Kvad. Norway. Science Nordic's article on How Vikings Navigated the World. 